Hey guys, welcome back to the Prehistoric Life Podcast, and today we're back with another interview. We have Dylan from Midwest Fossils. There's his Instagram if you guys want to go check that out. He has a lot of amazing content, so please go check that out. So would you like to introduce yourself further? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks. That was a really cool, uh, really cool intro. Thank um, you. Yeah, so my name is Dylan Sheets. Um, I'm based out of the Midwest. And um, I guess career wise, I'm an environmental scientist at an engineering company. And in my free time, spare time, every weekend, sometimes after work, I am uh, running around the rivers and creeks and stuff looking for ice age fossils all over the Midwest. So um, been doing that probably about 10, 15 years now. So, yeah. I mean, that's I mean, how else would you want to spend your time? I know. I don't know what else what else is worth doing. So, <laughs> so, I mean. One of the most basic questions that I basically just start off every interview with is what is your favorite dinosaur? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, let's see. So for me, I got to go, man, it's probably a tie between two. I really like Triceratops because that's one I've, I've found before um, in the Hell Creek formation, I guess, a long time ago. Um, and then mm -hmm. Hypsilbema missouriensis, the uh, Missouri dinosaur. It's like a hadrosaur. So yeah. Um, there's only one Cretaceous outcropping in the state of Missouri, and it's way down south. And there's uh, there's been scattered mosasaur fossils and uh, some hadrosaurs, some other stuff. But uh, yeah, a lot of cool stuff coming out of there. But probably probably got to go with that one, I would think. So you also said that you deal with mostly uh, I'm supposed to say Cretaceous, but that's not right. Uh, oh, Ice yeah. Age dinosaurs or creatures. We're really mm -hmm. dinosaurs anymore. So what's your favorite mammal? Oh, man, that's a tough one. I would say probably the stag moose. So Cervalces, the uh, the giant moose, that would be probably one of my favorite ones. Favorite ones to find, either that or the uh, probably the giant ground sloth. But Yeah, giant ground sloth. I mean, those huge claws that they have, I could only imagine finding one of those. Those things are. Oh, yeah. I got one right, right here. They are pretty, pretty big bad. Wow. Ones, but Look how big that thing is. Yeah, this it's is just one like, of the larger, larger ones on the hand. <clears throat> but do you know if that one was like where it was in its life? Was it like old, like older? Was it like a juvenile? Um, yeah, so this one is definitely from an adult animal, and you can see in this one it has part of the sheath too. So this is the inner claw core, basically. And then so the actual claw would extend way beyond this. Um, for all kinds of digging and stripping leaves and branches and stuff from trees. But that would probably be a full-grown adult. Um, and once they were fully grown, that that's the Jefferson's ground sloth. And he was probably about the size of a, uh, a very large rodeo bull, probably. Because wow. those, those rodeo bulls are pretty big, usually. Oh, yeah, definitely. The uh, the sloths, they're just kind of weird shape because you get to the head and it's it's not that big compared to the body, but it has a huge body, very wide very wide hips, um, center of gravity. So definitely some funky, funky animals. Definitely. And they were probably not like the slow moving sloths we have today. Oh yes. <laughs> they were definitely very, very different lifestyles for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, definitely. We had two main ones in the Midwest. We had the, uh, the paramylodon, um, which was kind of more in the plains. And those have been the ones that are, uh, known for digging burrows and stuff. But, uh, and then we had the Jefferson's ground sloth, which was more into the, uh, into forested areas and more diverse habitats and stuff. But, yep. So, I mean, it's just crazy, man, because <laughs> I hear, you hear all this stuff about like dinosaurs in the Hell Creek formation and uh, the Morrison formation, but you never really hear, the mammals kind of get pushed to the side. And mm -hmm. I, I love dinosaurs, don't get me wrong, but, <laughs> mammals are like they're pushed to the side a little too much in my opinion mm. they, they still got they still need some recognition because i mean there are some amazing mammals that are just being because i mean weren't there like oh uh, were they i was about to say like tigers but weren't there lions in like north america absolutely yeah we had some of the most um incredible diverse megafauna um especially north america over here in the new world we had i mean for almost any animal that we have nowadays, there was a basically an extinct giant version of it. I mean, we had the American lions, we had the giant beaver, giant armadillos, um, the giant capybaras, even giant owls and giant box turtles. Like 
it was it was cr- giant tortoises, um, just crazy stuff running around, and it was such a short time period that it all disappeared too, which is which is super interesting to me. Like we just missed just missed having saber tooth cats and all kind of crazy stuff in just a span of just ten ten ish thousand years. Um, so yeah, that's what's so interesting to me is we just barely j- barely just missed such a crazy time period. And speaking of saber tooth cats, I got some molds of smilodon fangs here oh very nice very nice ones yeah those are some nice little killing fangs there man <laughs> and i love how it's just like wow this thing's a massive beaver how do we name it yeah <laughs> beaver <laughs> like, yep. yeah, you're right that pretty much sums it up but i mean yep. so would you like to talk about what you do i mean yeah absolutely so um, I guess a little backstory and stuff like growing up, um, I started to get really into fossils probably when I was in like grade school or something like fourth, third, fourth, fifth grade. But uh, I just really didn't know where to start. Um, I was st- just started really getting into the Ice Age stuff, but I didn't really think I could find anything around where I lived um, in Missouri because um, we have just tons of limestone rocks. So it's I think our state fossils, the, cry- the crinoid, so those little sea lily things, um, tons of gastropods, all kind of shell fossils and marine stuff um that's like hundreds of million years old so really old stuff um so i started finding those like in creeks just wandering around and stuff but uh wasn't really aware that i could find like the great megafauna like mastodon teeth and mammoths and ground sloths and short-faced bears and uh all kind of this this crazy megafauna that that uh basically lived all around us back in the day um but yeah, once I started to get more into that, I joined some local fossil clubs. Um, when I was a kid, I had a lot of really nice, nice mentors, um, geology professors, and just other amateur collectors and stuff that uh, would work with me, and and they would take like field trips and stuff. Um, but not a lot of like ice age trips. Most people, I feel like in this area, are really into the uh, invertebrate side of stuff. So they really like the going to road cuts and finding like all the crinoids and shell fossils and the uh every once in a while i get a trilobite or something out of missouri or illinois but um yeah so it was definitely i felt like kind of moving upstream uh carving my own way trying to find uh find ice age fossils um around here but i mean after a few like i would say a good 10 years or so when i started getting really serious um that's when i started to get some good spots and and realize how much the material is actually around um but uh yeah, just that's just a little backstory, I guess. But how, of me getting into fossils, I guess. <laughs> I mean, because Ice Age was like, I don't want to say the land was the exact same because it wasn't, but it was mm-hmm. pretty much how it is today. It was mm-hmm. kind of done shaping as crazy as it was. I mean, so basically, there was stuff everywhere, even in like where I'm from. I'm from South Carolina, so we tend to get a lot of shark teeth and things like that, but we still have like, smile it on and we have mammoths and things like that here we got some stags and uh mm. i think some i think we had like a bison here at one point mm. but it's like it, it's everywhere you just got to look for it i mean we had like rhinos in europe and asia i mean mm. they're everywhere if you just know what you're looking for and that's that's the cool part absolutely absolutely that's yeah every, everything you just said i mean yeah, the Ice Age, definitely, like, a lot of the landscape is uh, is very similar. And a lot of the landscape looks the way it does um, from a lot of these Ice Age uh, features, particularly in the uh, in the Midwest with the glacial glacial activity we had. Um, basically, everything you see, like, north of, like, where I'm at in St. Louis and the Missouri River is uh, all glacial, glacial activity um, and moraines and stuff. Um, I mean, the Great Lakes didn't exist, like, 20,000 years ago, and they just came about from the carving out of the glaciers and then that outwash would uh, kind of melt and drain down the uh, Mississippi river and stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, everything, the landscape is shaped by a lot of glacial tills. So a lot of these giant granite boulders you'll see um, you'll find, I mean, Lake Superior agates, we'll find them in Iowa. Um, they've come all the way down. We'll find uh, petrified wood from the Fort union formation, I think all the way down here in uh, St. Louis and, and Cape Girardeau and stuff that have been washed downstream and stuff and pushed down by glaciers. But uh yeah, it's just so cool finding something that it's like, like a, we'll find like a, like a Lake Superior agate or something, like a big one in Iowa. It's like, wow, this came from all the way up north and has been scraped down or, um, but 
Yeah, definitely. Especially when you, when you drive across Illinois or one of those super flat states. I mean, it's just been completely scraped flat um, by all this glacial activity glacial and stuff. So, yeah, it's just super cool to me. Just, I mean, thinking about how short of a time it was. Uh, I mean, there were several glacial stages, but uh, um, yeah, definitely a lot of the land we see today was absolutely shaped by the Pleistocene. And a lot of those older rocks have been completely just scraped away, um, particularly around this area. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what kind of gave it that Great Plains kind of look is that that glacier glacier just basically went whoosh and just made a giant flat place. I mean, it's water, so it's leaving water behind it to kind of fertilize the soil a little bit. So, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like like in Minnesota and Michigan up there, all those ponds and the bogs and everything um, left behind from just all the glacial activity, glacial meltwater and stuff um absolutely yeah they left left all kind of remnants i mean yeah there's stuff everywhere as long as you just know what you're looking for i mean Mm -hmm. even if it's not like millions of years old because everybody's like i'm gonna go find a fossil and they're like expecting t-rex or triceratops or something but (laughs) you get like cave bear and giant ground sloths and things like that it's still mm. right there with it. I mean, oh, absolutely. Not as old, but it's still older than humans. Mm. So definitely, I mean, definitely. So I like because I mean, you you don't have triceratops anymore, but rhinos are kind of triceratops of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you kind of uh, fill that niche, don't they, a little bit? Um, but yeah, definitely. I mean, there's there's stuff everywhere if you know where to look. I mean. I mean, yes, yeah, South Carolina, you guys have a great, great place to see in history. Um, I mean, shoot, just the other day on a, I guess it was closer to North Carolina. I, I saw a post on Facebook. Some uh, lady found a short-faced bear jaw just on the beach. Um, and then, I mean, you guys have the, the Camelot site, the really famous one. Um, yeah. They pulled a bunch of crazy stuff out of there. Um, but, yeah, the problem is a lot of times, I mean, the sediments – um, a lot of the fossiliferous sediments, at least around here in South Carolina, really, I mean, they're going to be in these, uh, these clay, clay beds and stuff. And around here, a lot of those are uh, lacustrine clays. So they're from glacial lakes, um, kind of at the end of those glaciers and stuff. There was a lot of still sediment and then it uh, kind of deposited and stuff. In the glacial till of those rocks, you won't really find as much fossils. You'll find stuff, but it's usually not as nice. Um, but once you get into like those deep, thick blue clays, blue, yellow, red clay, um, that's where you'll find, uh, you'll find veins sometimes of like Pleistocene bones or more often than not, those sediments are, uh, pretty deep. And then the movement of river water and sand kind of just rakes the bottom during flood events and will, uh, spit Pleistocene bones out and stuff on the gravel bars or, uh, even underwater and stuff too. But, uh, yeah, just, uh, just being in the right place at the right, t- the right time is a, uh, is a big part of it. That, that um, is definitely for sure. Part. But were you gonna say something? Oh no, you're you're good. No, because I mean, on the beaches, like like you're saying, someone found the short faced bear lower lower jaw, upper jaw. Yeah, it was a, a lower mandible. Yep, the lower right jaw. So, I mean, yeah, on the beach, it's kind of hard to get that because mm-hmm. yeah. sometimes <laughs> you get stuff that washes up, so you mm-hmm. just gotta be there at the right time. Yeah, and I mean that's that's just luck of the draw maybe you find something maybe you don't but there are a lot of places where it's not like that i mean rivers t- or uh lakes they're still they tend to keep things just where they are i mean so there's there's plenty of examples like that like i mean there's there's so much stuff everywhere and it's just mind blowing to see what you can find mm-hmm. oh absolutely I think, yeah, that's a great point. The the thing, yeah, people don't realize how much of it's there, but um, you just got to be able to know where to look. So, like, if I was, for instance, let's say in uh, Michigan, Minnesota, um, Ohio or something, they are great. They have tons of uh, peat bogs and stuff. And there's a lot of peat mining activity. Um, a lot of times when the mastodons, and it's usually mastodon fossils or uh, stagmus or sloths are found, they're found during those peat mining activities um, because all the perfect – um, anaerobic activities and stuff of the, uh, the vegetation and decays over thousands of years. And it kind of just 
keep stuff really well preserved. So some of the best mastodon fossils that are kind of ever found in the world are found in that, uh, that region in peat bogs. Um, if I was in, let's say Nebraska or Iowa, I would be looking at like a gravel pit or gravel quarry, um, kind of near where there's some Pleistocene terrace deposits, a lot of the Pleistocene gravel and, uh, old ancient riverbeds. Um, a lot of times you'll find people will find mammoth teeth, uh, bones, muskox skulls coming out of those gravel pits. Um, same thing in Texas too. But, uh, and then, I mean, yeah, around here, I mean, basically anywhere, if you can get in a good, a good river with uh, good high banks, really cutting down deep, um, some good clay beds and stuff, um, you definitely have a shot to find something. So yeah, just kind of playing the field where you're at and, uh, looking at geological maps are, is super helpful too. And knowing what kind of, uh, formations or, uh, sediments are in your area is really good too. But, uh, so, yeah, nothing beats boots on the ground. So if anybody's looking for anything, I do suggest doing some research on what's in your area first. <clears throat> Don't go looking for T-Rex in the middle of Florida. You're probably not going to find it. <laughs> yep, if you're yeah. like, like, I want to go find a, megalodon tooth and you're in florida you're probably in luck mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> you're there i mean but if you do go out do some research on what what you what's in your area <laughs> then then leave go out do whatever see what you find and if you do find something send me something maybe i'll show it in an episode or something cool who knows i mean but i mean so do you have any like favorite fossils that you found interesting mm. fossils that you like to talk about or show off yeah about. absolutely let's see um so i guess there's a few good ones i guess i'll start with one that's pretty unassuming um i found this one you can see that one in focus it's a hoof core um from a cervalsis the uh, stag moose and when i found this i was probably in middle school i didn't know what it was um i thought it was from a cow and at the time i kind of kept everything um, just cause it was like exciting to find any bone. So I like threw it in a bin with a bunch of, uh, we find a lot of butcher block bones, like bones that have been sawed, like they could be 50, 60 years old, but, uh, and I just kind of threw in a pile of fat. But, uh, later on when I had actually like kind of knew what was up and stuff, I, uh, this was going through those boxes and I was like, oh my gosh, that's like a large cervid, a large cervid hoof. So, uh, that's probably the rarest fossil that I've found, um, well, other than a few other things, but uh, probably one of the cooler things for me is that uh, that Cervalsi hoof because I've never seen another one. So <laughs> that was a uh, that was a pretty exciting one. Um, let's see. I got my first Mastodon tooth I ever found right here. This was a uh, really young one. This is called the the fourth deciduous premolar. So this is the uh, fourth tooth the animal gets in its life. And this would have been probably a three or four year old animal. Um, at the time of death and you can see it is actually hollow there's no roots formed yet so once the uh, right. tooth is growing in the mouth it's kind of like a conveyor belt and it's moving forward and then once they start using it they will uh, develop roots as this one you can see there's no no wear on it yet it is totally unused but uh definitely a very very young animal um but that was my first mastodon tooth so that was pretty exciting um this one's probably one of my favorites. This wow. is the jaw of a baby uh, Colombian mammoth. You can see the, uh, see the tooth right there. This one had been probably around the same age as that other, that other mastodon. Um, yeah, I found this guy on one of the big rivers, just in a pile of sand. But uh, yeah, probably one of my favorite finds because my dad was there, my little brother was there. And uh, I don't know, I feel like you really never see, you see a lot of woolly mammoth jaws and teeth and stuff, but uh, I mean, Colombian mammoths, I don't know that I've seen another baby, a baby Colombian mammoth jaw, um, especially one coming out of Missouri, because Missouri is all, basically all mastodon and stuff for us. So just because of the environment, I guess. Um, if you go to like above the north of the Missouri River, it's all, it's like way flat and you'll get a lot more mammoth teeth out of the rivers and stuff and the gravel pits. And then you'll get some muskox. And right when you go about south, that's when you get all the big hills and uh like the caves and sinkholes and stuff so you'll see almost exclusively mastodon um like this let's see this big big mastodon mole right wow. um a couple of years are massive oh yeah um and this one's a little not a not a huge one i mean it's a uh it's a four humper so 
it, this is the uh, the third molar, so the last tooth the animal gets um, in its life. And eventually it would just wear this down to just about nothing to the roots and it wouldn't be able to feed anymore. Um, but yeah, this one probably got stuck. He could have gotten stuck in a sinkhole or just kind of died or um, I don't know what happened, but yeah, he was found in a, in a creek bed a couple of years ago. But let's see. Those are really cool. Let's see. I got a couple other ones my buddies have found. Um, can't beat the uh, little dire wolf, dire wolf jaw. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, this one I came out of the river in uh, Nebraska. Crazy mineralization, too. It's hard as a rock. Um, yeah, super. You can see some wear, crazy wear there in the teeth from the animal's life, uh, crunching bones and stuff. But uh, yeah, dire wolves. The carnivores are really, really rare in the Midwest, um, unlike the coast. Um, I mean, Florida, you'll see you'll see some bits and pieces and stuff and teeth. And then, of course, like La Brea. Um, La Brea is great, great for uh, carnivores. But uh, yeah, the central states, you really don't see as many uh, as many carnivore fossils. Um, there was I mean, you might have seen on the news last year that came a big news article about the uh, smile on they found in Iowa. Um, it was one of, one of the biggest ones ever found, I guess, that uh, came out of south southern southwest Iowa, I want to say. So I think they're still working on some papers, some papers for that right now. Um, but, yeah, it has like I think it has the rights. The let one of the only one of the savers. But uh, I think they're saying the other one it lost lost in its lifetime um oh speaking of carnivores i guess oh probably my, one of my other favorite ones is uh so this is an ulna from a uh a giant short-faced bear uh arctotus simus so probably one of my favorite fossils from missouri just absolutely huge hard to even fit in the frame <laughs> but uh i mean as you can see like compared to uh definitely definitely bigger than uh bigger than mine but uh and it's missing the uh distal end um, it actually went out for carbon dating. There's a little piece missing off. So this one's going to be in a paper, hopefully this year or next year, I want to say, um, on giant short face bears coming out of uh, Iowa and Missouri. But uh, yeah, short face bears, one of my favorites. But uh, I don't know. It is pretty hard to beat these, uh, these giant beaver teeth that we get sometimes. Um, I mean, they're basically like the size of a, a saber cat, <laughs> saber cat too. Yeah. Almost. Beavers but, are bigger than people. Oh think. yeah, these ones would have been crazy too. This one went about uh, about the size of a black bear, um, and they get even bigger than this too. And about this much would be in the jaw, this much would stick out. But uh, very interesting animals because they don't think they uh, lived the same kind of same kind of lives as the modern beaver. I don't think they were able to cut down cut down trees and make dams and they think that's probably what kind of led to their uh led to their demise eventually because the modern beavers can influence their environment and, and create their habitat um unlike the the giant beavers we're probably more like giant muskrats um but crazy animals crazy animals my buddy actually found this tooth in uh iowa last year so so that was pretty uh pretty cool one i found about this much of one but uh they're they're very hard to find uh, find intact like that <laughs> You're talking about uh, short-faced bear. This, this is uh, some cave bear bones. Oh wow! A buddy of mine gave me. Um, yeah. Shout out to you, Seth from Fossil Shack. I'm getting an oh, interview awesome. with, him, with you sometime later. But I mean, <laughs> I'm assuming these are some type of toe fossils because they seem a little <laughs> small to be. So oh, yeah, <laughs> for like a cave bear. Yeah, it definitely looks like you got uh, yep, got some from the paw there, little uh, metacarpal, little toe bone. I mean, um, those cave bears can get pretty huge though. They they a lot of their bones are are very close to the size of the uh, short faced bear bones we get around here. Cave um, bears and short faced bears, they were the big. I think people think grizzly bears are massive. Make oh them, yeah, guys look like dwarves. It's crazy. I mean, yeah, definitely. Those ones would have you would have not wanted to run into them around the campfire back then. <laughs> Yeah, I think they've done the. Uh, I'm trying to remember some kind of biochemistry analysis on their bones, and it's just hy hyper carnivore. I want to say, and uh, I don't know. I'm I'm hoping to get the. Uh, I know they're doing the same testing on the uh, Smilodon and a couple other pieces right now. So hoping to hear back from some of my uh, buddies at the university about those soon. But uh, yeah, short faced bears, cave bears, can't get enough of them. <laughs> <laughs>
if it's a black bear, you fight back. If it's a brown bear, you lay down. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do if it's a cave bear? Uh, oh, well, you, I know. The polar get on bear, your knees and you like, pray. Yeah. What do they say? If it's black, fight back. If it's brown, lay down. If it's white, say good night for polar bear. But uh, I would assume the short face or a cave bear is much worse. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you see those, you just hope. <laughs> Yeah, you're no, kind of uh, you're kind of out of luck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but. there there are a lot of and, and like you think about like Smilon because you see how massive mammoths and mm -hmm. Mastodon are, and then you're just like then you got like Smilodon and people that hunted those. You're like, we're a very weird species. Oh yeah, <laughs> we we hunted these things. Mm -hmm. What happened? <laughs> Yeah, I know. We went from went from uh, hunting short faced bears to working office jobs and stuff, man. But <laughs> yeah, there, there's a lot of history there, and I mean, because it's also not like mammals were just like the only thing here. There was a <laughs> bunch of other stuff too. Because I don't know about North America, but I know South America had things like terror birds and oh yeah. Those things would have been horrendous to deal with. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's literally a like a dromaeosaur basically. <laughs> yeah. If you have to put terror in the name, I think it's probably something you should stay away from. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, wow. I would just like. I don't know what I did would do with it, but if I got like a mammoth tusk, I would just have to like hang it on the wall or something. Oh yeah. <laughs> I got like. Yeah. They're hard to store. They're very large and, and awkward shaped and stuff. Um, I got a few, well, a few Mastodon tusks in the basement and stuff. And uh, I mean, yeah, they're just, I mean, they're on the ground in storage. I just can't, <laughs> I haven't built stands for them and stuff, but. Uh, too heavy for a shelf. Too yeah. Too large for a drawer. Yep. What do I do with this thing? <laughs> so I, I know you, man, you can fill up a basement pretty quick with uh, a lot of Mastodon bones and stuff. I would imagine. <laughs> but. <laughs> Because they were, like, twice the size of, like, elephant tusks. So, I mean, and, I mean, I've seen, like, pictures and things from, like, poachers and things where they're, like, showing, like, a pile of, like, mammoth tusks. Or, uh, not mammoth tusks. That'd be crazy. Um, Elephant tusks that have been, like, reclaimed or whatever. And there's, like, a lot of them. And they take up a lot of room. I can only imagine what, like, a pile of mammoth tusks like that looks oh, like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, you definitely got to have the, uh, the space and the facilities for that. But, uh, yeah, definitely some crazy variety. I would say, like, the Mastodon tusks, if you see, like, the Super Tusker, African elephants, like, those giant tusks they had, they are probably uh, got pretty close to that. But there was also, like, a ton of variety. Um, I found, like, giant curved ones. I found really short, straight ones. Um, but I have never found a mammoth tusk. My buddy in Iowa found a really large one a couple of years back. Um, and there's a picture somewhere of me and him with it. But uh, it's just, I mean, a giant Colombian, just a huge swooping curve to it. Um, yeah, but yeah, tusks are crazy. Probably the most, I would say, the charismatic part of the of the megafauna to find. <laughs> Much like this little guy I have here. The oh, little, yeah, just like that. <laughs> kind of a good-ish example how the tusk mm -hmm. curves like that. Oh, definitely. And I, Mammoth has definitely is one of the creatures that has definitely stolen the spotlight when it comes to megafauna. Definitely. You got Mammoth, you got uh, Smilodon. I was about to say something else. I don't even know what I was about to say. What no, I mean, there's because people think that the megafauna were a lot less diverse and they're like, <laughs> you got like Mammoth and Smilodon and mastodon mm -hmm. and elk and it's like there was a lot more than that yeah you had like oh. lions and wolves you had the uh god i'm blanking on the name it's the little thing with the club tail that had like the weird turtle shell oh yeah the little uh glip blip the dots yeah blip the dots yes thank you i mean like those, those things are pretty weird looking yeah <laughs> there's nothing today that looks much like those guys for sure <laughs> i mean Man. armadillos Oh, well, yeah. I mean, they're yeah, a good distant relative to them for sure. But uh, yeah, those ones would be cool to find. It's I mean, yeah, you're right. The crazy thing. I mean, all like the mammoths and stuff. Everyone knows the, the charismatic megafauna. But uh, I mean, I almost some of my favorite ones is like the ones people don't really know about, like the stag moose and the giant beavers and stuff. 
Um, I get way more excited about finding a giant beaver tooth than I do a mammoth tooth or something, you know, um, or a, a stag moose antler too. But uh, yeah, there, yeah, there's definitely just so many different kinds of animals than uh, than people know, and you can find them. I mean, from like, I mean, like a stag moose. There's been a lot of stag moose come out of New Jersey over there too, and uh, I want to say there's been a uh, a couple fossils from South Carolina, maybe a premolar or something. So that was like the defense. yeah. And actually one of mine is I feel like has had the spotlight stolen by the mammoth just a little bit. And Elasmotherium, mm -hmm. probably the more famous example of this. Oh, yeah. Uh, the um, woolly rhinoceros. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Uh, these are some that I got from uh, fossil crates. Probably the camera's mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely too close. Um, oh, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, the... This one is specifically the Celodonta. Uh huh. Don't ask me to pronounce the last name. Oh um, yeah. <laughs> I can't even see it. Uh, uh huh. Like, you kind of see it here. Oh Maybe yeah, no, super good quality, definitely. But I mean, there's a little model of one. Um, mm -hmm. but uh, they're they're found in Euro Asia. If you don't know what that means, it's Europe mm -hmm. and Asia. E Euro Asia. I mean, <laughs> uh, but. I mean, these things are basically just normal rhinoceros, but fuzzy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> furrier than mm -hmm. normal ones. But I mean, actually, I can move this camera around. I mean, look at, look how cool this thing looks. I mean, mm -hmm. shout, shout out to Fossil Crates too. I mean, y'all guys make good products. They release Mosasaurus and I want to say Megaceratops and Majungasaurus, but we're not going to focus on Majungasaurus. That would be. <laughs> something else later on i'll do an episode on that but they did uh they have mega ceratops the weird big old bump face thing mm -hmm. but i mean th that that alone because it's like a rhino without the the rhino part it's weird mm -hmm. i mean yeah <laughs> it, it kind of looks like it shouldn't exist mm -hmm. <laughs> It's crazy. A lot, a lot of stuff back then is not, uh, would not, I mean, you can imagine what a lot of people thought when they were finding them in like the 15, 1600s and stuff. And they find a mammoth skull and they think it's a cyclops or something like that. You know I mean? Oh, I mean, definitely. Uh, yeah. Like, you know, let me pull up a picture of the mega ceratops, everybody, or cerops, not ceratops. Um, mm -hmm. if images will load, thank you. <laughs> it's being really <laughs> difficult today. Um, <laughs> do this uh because if i saw one of these things like one of their skulls i don't think i would know what to like think of oh yeah <laughs> like this mm -hmm. i mean oh, yeah. i wouldn't know what to think about if i found that skull i'm like what mm -hmm. is this creature i've because you hear about all the people thinking of like dragons and things from like the marco polo writing and all he saw was like a elephant but it's like you find that skull what what do you believe that is yeah i don't even yeah that's i mean that's what i think the uh what is it the uh indigenous people's thunder beast story was about i forget if it yeah, was the, yeah, the sioux or whoever it was but yeah probably find these giant bones i mean yeah what do you even think about yeah because i mean the ice age stuff was and I mean, the first, like, I don't even want to say indigenous people, just the first people in general. I mean, they lived alongside these creatures. They hunted mm -hmm. them. They traveled with them. They herded them and, like, had the, whatever tactics they used. I mean, so we still have things like, it would be like a mammoth tusk. And I think I heard something about, or somebody told me about a mammoth tusk. And it had, like, carvings that were, like, from whenever it was harvested in it and it's like mm -hmm. we have human evidence that these things were hunted by us i mean mm -hmm. that's crazy to think about yeah oh definitely that's i mean yeah it's a crazy connection uh, i mean someone who was just like us you know i mean they had i mean they slept under the same stars and stuff just like a few thousand years before us and stuff and they had to live with cave lions and uh woolly mammoths and stuff um that's a great point you bring, you bring up about that, about the kind of like car carved mammoth tusks and stuff. Cause we don't have as much of that stuff in North America. Um, but there are a few pieces coming out. I want to say I had a buddy that 
found a stag moose antler that was uh, chopped up, I think, um, by stone tools. And I think, um, yeah, I don't know if they're bringing a paper out on that or whatever. But, um, yeah, definitely there's not as much on this side, but Europe has some crazy, crazy artifacts like that, carved cave lines, carved tusks and stuff. So um, super, super neat stuff. What do you call them? Cave paintings? There's something in France. Oh, yeah. The uh, Spain. Yep. Yeah. The uh, I can't even pronounce it. Chauvet, Chauvet, Chauvet uh, cave paintings. Those are really cool. If I was ever going to get a tattoo, like a sleeve, I would get like those cave paintings probably. <laughs> but <laughs> pretty, pretty good art. For, for anybody sure. that doesn't know what that is, I'll try to pull up a picture. Um, it's basically just exactly what you're thinking. Cave paintings in a cave. That's why they're called cave paintings. Um, as you see, it's the Ch Chauvet I'm going to yeah. go with. So yep. you can... Super realistic. I think that was a... Yeah, you see like a, a, not a Celadonta kind of thing, a Lasmatherium looking. You see a lot yep. of the woolly rhinos that I was just talking about. I mean, more woolly rhinos. You got some kind of donkey, wildebeest looking thing. I mean... There's a lot of history there. You got, mm. I don't know if that's, act, yeah, no. Some kind of elephant. You can tell that they didn't really know what the trunk was at that time. So they thought it was like a weird tusk. I mean, or I'm just assuming because I don't really yeah. know what's going on there. Um, they definitely had the whole landscape. I mean, yeah, they had the mammoths. I think there's aurochs, the, uh, the early cow. Um, they had the bite, the bison, the horses, uh, cave lions, hyenas, even, um, and super realistic. I mean, you can even tell the, uh, the males and females of the animals too. You can see the sexual dimorphism too. And the, there's different colors and stripes on some of them and, uh, super intricate detail captured in some of the, uh, crazy for how old they are. I mean, I want to say they're, I mean, 40, 30, 40, 50,000 years old. I'm, I forget what it is, but I would love to go see those. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, I'm assuming this is some kind of what do they call it? Clovis point, I guess, for like France. Oh, or, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, not Clovis culture, but I mean, yeah, like, they're they're uh, probably one of their great archaeological wonders for sure. Um, I think Clovis point is kind of exclusive for North America. It is. Yep. Yeah. The Clovis but, culture. That's probably their version of whatever you want to call their version of the Clovis point. Oh, yep. They definitely have had, uh, yeah, people there much longer, much longer than us over here. Definitely. But yeah, crazy artifacts they got. But, but I mean, because, I mean, like you're saying, you they found, uh, your buddy found something about the stag moose being cut up. I mean, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, there is a fossil somewhere of Smilodon. Where it was shown being like sport hunted, I think. Oh, really? Huh. I think. Uh, I'm, it might have been. Yeah, I know there's a lot of mammoth and mastodon uh, kill sites and stuff. Um, there's a, well, there's just actually Mastodon State Park just south of uh, where I live in St. Louis here was one of the first places they found the Clovis points with uh, mastodon bones. I just looked up Smilodon sport hunting fossils, but it's just Smilodon <laughs> fossils. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just Smilodon. I don't really know what I was going to find, but yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I, you see, like, uh, I think there was something else in Europe where they found, like, a human skeleton, and I posted it on my Instagram story. Uh, let's see if I can actually access that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no worries. Um, Let me actually bring it on to the camera. Yeah. <laughs> Where is it? Right here. Where they found um like a snake around a human. Oh jeez. It's like you, you know that person was definitely having a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they definitely. definitely and, mm -hmm. and I feel like that's why um because you can also tell with these fossils how like how I don't want to say how culture spread, but like how like cultural um what did you call them cliches I guess would appear how like you have like snakes tend to be representing representing like evil unguy or not unguiding but mistrusting kind of ideas because you see things like that and you're like 
somebody sees that, I come across my buddy who's surrounded by a snake. I'm going to be like, that creature is evil. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's killing my friend. What's going on here? Yep. Yeah, definitely. Definitely symbols and culture, a huge, huge aspect for sure uh, for, for back then. Uh, another crazy thing is like snakes are everywhere. Mm -hmm. They are everywhere. Even when you think they're not there, I think the only continent continent they're not on is Antarctica. And that's yeah, yeah. All because, right. <laughs> I think that's because like nothing's in Antarctica. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, they probably. Thousand amphibians wouldn't wouldn't have a good two of a time there. <laughs> you get those northern countries like Canada. You get parts of Alaska, not a country, but a northern state. You got like mm -hmm. Russia, Sweden, Norway, Finland. They all have snakes, and it's like mm -hmm. you're not safe from this thing. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, they definitely. at one point were big enough to eat people. So yeah, I mean, they can still eat you today if you get a big. I think it only has to be like 17 foot long or something. I think to. I mean, every once in a while, I feel like you see like a, a big reticulated python eat somebody in uh, over in Asia somewhere. But uh, it's pretty rare. Pretty rare nowadays, I want to say. Yeah, we kind of, I don't want to say evolved past that, but we're, we're kind of definitely more technologically advanced to kind of <laughs> avoid it a bit more. Mm, yeah. Yeah, definitely. You're kind of like, snakes are in this area. Maybe you shouldn't walk there. If you walk there, it's probably your fault you're getting eaten. Mm -hmm. <laughs> back then you're like all right well i guess i'm just going to travel this way today oh uh, now i'm in a snake pit <laughs> there's probably there's probably a lot more than snakes you had to worry about back then for sure but oh, definitely. Uh, I mean, you. <laughs> isn't that where like the um i forget what the actual term is but like the fear of the dark is not kind of where that comes from like our um ancient ancestors like not being able to like see at night oh i'm sure we have, we have this like fear of the dark and there being like predators out there i would i would assume so i mean yeah all the i mean you imagine all the we, we've been evolving around lions for hundreds of thousands of years so i mean lions and and uh i mean leopards and saber-toothed cats and uh i mean all kinds of large cats and, and wolves and bears especially too uh probably been eating us for the past few million years i would say so there's definitely got to be some some ingrained thing in our evolution there to uh definitely have a natural natural fear of the dark and probably what makes us so sociable i would say too want to kind of want to hang around other humans where it's safe and stuff and uh hanging around the campfire and not wandering off too far so the short faced bear gets you so <laughs> yeah um what is i was about to say Cle yeah cleveland clinic many many years ago when our ancestors lived and slept out in the open wouldn't <laughs> ever want to do that not even in modern times but oh <laughs> yeah the dark was very dangerous predators roamed at night and our ancestors had to stay aware in order to survive mm -hmm. just like that that is and it's so weird that like even that like clearly we don't have like smiled on and big lions and things we do have big cats still in america or america but they're not as they're definitely not as big but mm -hmm. like they're not here anymore, but we still have like instinct from that time, like from them hunting us to to like that like causes us like psychological things going on, which is mm -hmm. crazy. I mean, and it's like hardwired into us at this point. That's such just like a bizarre and really cool thing. Yeah. No, definitely. Art. We definitely used to have a lot, a lot more predators than we do uh, do nowadays. I think one of the coolest ones I've heard of is I want to say it's called the the. Uh, if you've heard of the Tong Child, the uh, the skull they found in Africa, it was. I think they thought it was a uh, an old rookery or a den for like a giant eagle. And there's a bunch of small animal bones, and then there's like the small skull of like a young early hominid or human or something. And it's got you can see in the eye eye sockets and stuff there's like scrape marks from like a, the beak of an eagle i think so definitely definitely stuff you would have had to worry about back then <laughs> yeah you can uh where's a good yeah this one this is close up you can kind of see like holes where maybe it pecked at and mm -hmm. see like kind of slashes around i mean there was definitely something going on there and um you get things like emus and the moa they were already massive birds already. 
mm-hmm. then you're like, oh yeah, there was an eagle that hunted those. You're mm-hmm. telling me yeah. that eagle wouldn't hunt people too? Yeah. Oh, that'd be that'd be a rough way to go. Getting, I mean, you're getting eaten by a dinosaur. I mean, that's what they are. So that would be. Uh, I mean, even be- even. Yeah, they're pretty creepy. I mean, they'll they'll like follow you around if you like walk outside their pen sometimes, and it's like you look at their legs and stuff. I mean, that thing's literally like a velociraptor, like the legs and the claws and stuff. <laughs> but I think I have an eagle claw somewhere. Oh yeah. Hang on. I don't feel like I have to find it. Oh yeah. <laughs> um. Don't remember where I stored it. There it is. Yeah. Actually, I got a better camera. Kind of. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is very, because I also just have like a Velociraptor claw here. So, Hmm. I mean, how similar they are. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's about, if I put it like right over it. Mm-hmm. Somehow, it's same shape. Yep. <laughs> same curvature. I mean, so you got birds of prey. I mean, aren't birds of prey called raptors? So I mean, I don't, yeah. I mean, literally, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how much more evidence you need than that. But I know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that would have been a horrible way to go. Because you know, like, I think there was something in, uh, I want to say Ireland or Scotland, where it was, uh, what do you call them? A falconeer, I guess. Uh, oh, They're doing something with an eagle with a crowd. And the eagle swooped down and picked up someone's baby. Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> I do that. <laughs> close encounter. Yeah. It's like, eh, I think that's more than a close encounter. It would be a little close for me, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it'd be that baby's gonna have some definite <laughs> trauma growing up. But <laughs> yeah, I'll be afraid to go outside by itself and uh, afraid of the sky. <laughs> you always watch the sky. Yeah. I mean, even nowadays, there's stuff still today that comes from um, those times. Like, let me switch to this camera. Boom. Uh, let me like this. This is just like a deer bottom jaw that i found like walking in the woods i mean it you just it's not ancient but i mean you can still look at it it's still kind of nasty because it's dirty and oh yeah (laughs) it's still rotten but Mm -hmm. you can look at it and tell like how similar it is to like ancient fossils Mm -hmm. oh yeah i mean it looks exactly like uh Mm -hmm. Almost exactly like the stagmoose jaws I have, just just a lot smaller. Yep. Yeah, I mean, and, and I mean, it, it's just like a normal deer that you can like. What I want to say, go out into the woods and find, but because they'll probably run from you. But yeah, you mm-hmm. pretty much just locate one in the woods. I mean, you you can find things like vertebrae and antlers. I mean, and, and they're not even like dead. I mean, they're still around. Mm-hmm. They just changed i mean mm-hmm. that, that's the impressive part is that like people are like oh well mega they hear all this stuff about like mega fauna is extinct and it's like no it just turned turned into normal fauna yeah <laughs> i mean it mm. just unmegged if that makes sense i mean yeah definitely i mean the bison's a great example of that too i mean the uh i know a lot of them have cow genetics in them now too that makes them smaller and the horns a little smaller but i mean I mean, the bison latifrons, the bison antiquus. I mean, um, yeah, I had a buddy that found a skull the other day that was, I want to say, 30, 36, 38 inches across, tip to tip. Um, I mean, so, like, just completely different. And even, like, only a few thousand years ago, I want to say, the bison were way, way larger than the uh, the ones you see today. So, I mean, you oh, even yeah, see most definitely. Definitely. ramming cars and stuff. And can't even imagine how uh, how much damage one of the big big antiquous ones could do. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, most definitely, I would not want to run into one of those. Yeah, you're not taking selfies with that one, Yellowstone. <laughs> but <laughs> that, I, I still feel really horrible for that little girl. But it's also like, oh, <laughs> it's a wild animal. I don't know what you expected. Yeah, people do that every year, but they never learn. Or somebody, always somebody. <laughs> I always feel I'm I'm always like. 
oh my gosh, that poor person. But I'm also like, are you dumb? It's an animal. Why would you go mess with it? Yep. Yeah, people, I mean, the natural selection. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's one way to put it. That's, I mean, that's the whack in the day. That's that's how it would have gone. I mean, there are a lot of bison. I mean, that's the most numerous thing we find, uh, fossil or like subfossil, is bison bones in the creeks and rivers. Um, just because, I mean, there was millions of them on the plains. So, I mean, we'll go in rivers sometimes. You can't even pick everything up because it's just, oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. broken pieces and um, all, all kind of bison stuff. So that's definitely the most common, the common thing we find all over the Midwest. I don't want to say that bison was the most common thing, but because I don't have really any experience. You, you're saying that and I don't, oh, I, don't <laughs> I can't back you up on that or anything. I don't really have that experience and um, haven't really done that research. But I feel like since from like modern times, kind of how we see it, how they kind of lived or currently kind of live in huge herds, mm -hmm. I, I would – and seeing some of the strategies that like people have employed – and some other things like maybe they heard them off cliffs and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That could be part of it. Cause I mean, everything dies in one area. You kind of get just a huge dig side of. Yeah. Those Buffalo jumps. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't see why ancient people wouldn't try to attempt the same strategies. I mean, mm -hmm. and it's actually crazy. Cause even humans were kind of like the early humans, they were kind of like megafauna. Mm hmm they they were definitely larger. They were definitely, I don't want to say smarter because probably that, that was our most powerful weapon was our our brains for sure. Yeah, we definitely and, didn't choose. I don't want to say that we were weak. Ancient ancestors were weak, but we definitely choose brains over bronze. Yeah, I mean compared to the megafauna, yeah, we're definitely not Com compared to like w what a silverback gorilla. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's like. Mm. Yeah, we're probably not winning that fight uh, hand to hand, but we're like, I got a spear. I can stand five feet away and poke you with it. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, spears were great, and once they developed the uh, the atlatls too. If you ever ever use one of those, those are really fun. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's like those little throwing sticks that you have for your dog. It throws the ball. It's sort of the same the same thing as an extra elbow. Um, yep, those uh, all those dart points and stuff have been great, great for hunting and stuff, hunting bison, horses, and camels and stuff. And um, yeah, I think, I mean, I think, yeah, the first, the, well, you've probably heard of the Folsom site. Um, I want to say New Mexico or, uh, when they, they found all the bison, the giant bison antiquus and stuff. And that yeah. points associated with it. Um, but yeah, super, super crazy stuff. And I mean, it, it it's, the creatures there were not that much different than how they are today. They were just kind of larger. I mean, mm -hmm. that's why most of them are just like the giant beaver or the giant bison or yeah. things like that. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it was just the same thing, but larger. I mean, even, even mammoths, everybody like hypes up the mammoth, but it's really just a giant furry or elephant. I mean, absolutely it's not really right. Of a premise. That's the crazy thing too, is I mean, a, uh, an Asian elephant is more closely related to a mammoth than it is to an African elephant, which is uh, really fun. I mean, that's how they're going to, I mean, genetically engineer one into a mammoth is what they say. But uh, yeah. It's like the breeding through. Yep. Oh, yeah. They're going to mess. I think they're going to mess with like uh, an embryo or mess with like with the DNA because they can't use the DNA from like the permafrost. It's too fragmented. So they're just going to manipulate. I guess one and then use some mammoth DNA stuff. I don't know. They're going to put an embryo in like a living elephant and then it's going to give birth to a uh, little mammoth. I'm pretty sure, but I don't know. I feel like they keep changing, keep changing that technology every year. So yeah, I want to see a mammoth. I'm, I'm all for it. I haven't really kept up with that. So I don't really, I can't really speak <laughs> on that. Mm -hmm. I, it'd be cool to see one, but I mean, probably not. Well, it could be in our lifetime. It's not that bizarre of an idea. Yeah. The, uh, you should check out this this uh, company, or they have an Instagram account, Colossal um, Biosciences. They're they're talking about uh, bringing the first mammoth calves back in like four years, but I feel like a few years ago they said the same thing, and I feel like it was like four years ago. So I was like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> four years our time or four years your time? What's going on? Yeah, did yeah. <laughs> you, so, you mean for decades? Yeah. Yeah, you never know, never know what's going on, but that'd be really cool. I think we should bring everything back. So I'm, I want to see all this stuff, but uh, I mean, yeah, it's 
that's another thing. I like if we do that, I've seen Jurassic Park. I've seen yep. Jurassic Park two, Jurassic Park three, yep. Lost World. Yep. Uh, Jurassic World, Jurassic World two, the newest yep. one. <laughs> Let's get some security on here. I mean, I'm just saying they always have the dinosaurs breaking out. I don't know. Maybe we should just <laughs> figure that out. <laughs> Yeah, probably a good thing to think think of about ahead of time for sure. But uh, I mean, yeah, hopefully, I mean, a woolly a woolly mammoth. I mean, it's basically just going to be a hairy Asian elephant that they if they. Make. Yeah, that's not an abstract idea. I mean, but uh, I mean, once they start getting into the other stuff, like if you started playing around with like a, an emu or a cassowary or something, and you gave it like a bunch of teeth and claws and stuff, that'd be. Well, I think I that'd think be. there was something about them like just doing like hybrid chicken and basically getting a T Rex. I mean. I've heard about that. I mean, they like use the little traits in the embryo and they like turn stuff on and off. And yeah, it's like stuff. Maybe let's build an enclosure before you clone the dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, I'd love, love to see one. I, I'm all for it. But I mean, yeah, definitely put it put in a cage. But <laughs> <laughs> let's not release anything weird into the wild. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, nothing that wasn't there before. <laughs> that, that's another thing. I mean, how many of these creatures should we bring back, though? Because mm -hmm. it would be cool to bring them back, but how many of them, like, because you get things like the dodo and other mm -hmm. creatures that went extinct due to humans. So it's kind of like, yeah. if you bring it back, it probably wouldn't change much. But things yeah. like Smilodon, where it went extinct because it couldn't hunt certain megafauna anymore because they had adapted to change. It's like, do we bring that back? Do we get <laughs> it extinct? How do, how do we approach this? I mean, yeah. That's another thing that people think that like we did become the meteor for megafauna, if you want to say that. We were kind of a nail in the coffin, but we also weren't the only nail. Mm -hmm. There was things like rising temperature, climate change, predators like smile it on here. I mean, the creatures were like, and eh, we kind of don't want to be hunted by it anymore. Let's adapt and change. I mean, mm -hmm. they at like fangs i mean they were built for larger creatures to hit the jugular and go in and basically drown them in their whole their own blood which sounds worse and worse and really horrible every time i say it it never gets better <laughs> they were definitely very good at what they were designed for 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 a very long time <laughs> i mean certain niches like that it's kind of like eh, if we don't bring back megafauna maybe we we shouldn't just bring back smilodon or if we do, we put it in a cage with other <laughs> megafauna and let it hunt, built like a yeah. enclosure kind of thing. Yep, definitely. There's some. There's some that would be, I think, a little more better than others. I mean, yeah, the woolly mammoth, and then like the dodo bird, passenger pigeon, thylacine. I'd love it if they could do a stellar sea cow, but I don't know if they could do that. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're gonna do a smilodon, you'd probably have to do a like. Uh, You'd have to get some like homotherium, which is the really northern uh, saber tooth cat um, from like Alaska or something, and try to try to get some form of uh, I don't even know if you can get the DNA off that stuff, but uh, just to see what the genome looks like. You know, or whatever. But yeah, so that'd be cool. Like, I mean, it'd probably be in a zoo, but <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that's I a stone. Then you have the ethics of cloning and all that, but mm -hmm. that's a completely yeah. different discussion. <laughs> Yep. Should we should we clone something for the purpose of entertainment and entertainment alone? Or mm -hmm. but it's like, yeah, I don't think we just use it for entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> Scientific discovery and breakthrough there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely good for a dangerous species and stuff. I would I would think uh as used for a conservation tool would be great. And bringing back some really recently extinct species would be a good first step probably but <laughs> get passenger pigeons then we don't have to send emails anymore i know yeah <laughs> yeah some of the start start baby steps before you get to a dinosaur you know <laughs> yeah I mean, let's get some maybe a few mammals back up in here a little mm -hmm. bit yeah I mean, maybe we should start with some herbivores first i mean mm -hmm. like the whole jurassic world thing where like People think dinosaurs are boring. They they come to the island and look at it like an elephant in a zoo. Okay, first off, who in their right mind would go to a dinosaur park and look <laughs> at it like a brachiosaurus and go, Psh, it's just an elephant. Mm. I get excited when I go to the zoo and see an elephant. Mm. Still, oh, absolutely. Mm. It's like I, I, I still get excited and I'm like seen it like 50 times or already. I mean – 
Are you saying the employees are getting bored? Because I don't know what humans you're talking about. Yeah. No, I think, yeah, no, I, it's, it's hard not to be amazed when you see the, when you see the megafauna. I mean, there's got to be something in our, in our, our DNA and our evolution or something. I mean, we grew up, we grew up with these animals and stuff, you know, and um, Africa is really the only continent that still has its most, a lot of its, most of its megafauna. Um, I mean, every other continent, we all, every other continent basically had a whole diverse range of megafauna that's, that's gone now. So I think it's really cool to be able to see that even if it's in a zoo or wherever, you know? I mean, yeah. It'd be cool to study. I mean, also we still get excited to see like models of the bones of these creatures. Mm-hmm. And you're telling me we would get bored of, of <laughs> living. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm calling BS on that. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. see how good, but <laughs> Clearly just a plot point for them to make a giant murder dino, but a <laughs> discussion for a different day. I'll yep. do an episode on why Jurassic World is dumb. Because um, <laughs> apparently calling movies dumb gets a lot of views. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm guilty of watching those those videos too. <laughs> we all are. But, mm. I, I mean, if we do bring these things back, like they say, let's start with something like the dodo or the mammoth. Mm. so you know if it gets out you're just kind of like eh, at least it won't eat anybody <laughs> something friendly yeah <laughs> i mean yeah. at least at least it won't just go around hunting people mm. uh, that would suck but like uh, well, let's definitely not do any hybrids uh, <laughs> yeah i don't i don't yeah hybrids would be i don't yeah, yeah. um that's a, that's a whole other ethical thing i think even all of those ligers and stuff usually have a lot of health issues and stuff yeah but yeah, I mean, I don't know many carnivores they would really bring back other than like, I mean, the thylacine or whatever. Um, I mean, maybe like uh, some of those like tiger or lion subspecies or something that just went extinct in the past few hundred years. Um, I heard a lot of those, like a lot of the lions around there and stuff, the subspecies were lost because they were bringing them to like, for like to fight gladiators and stuff and like the Coliseum and stuff. So they would send people out to go, go catch all the, all kinds of bears and tigers <laughs> stuff. Make some poor peasant fight them. <laughs> we, we are the only species that has like just like the stupidity and the intelligence enough to do that. <laughs> oh yeah. We're like we're like we are so above every single animal that we're going to capture animals that would that our ancestors <laughs> would get hunted by. Yeah. To make them fight somebody else in a ring. Yeah. For our entertainment, it's like. Um, definitely would have been huh? alive. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Pass this by me again. What's going on here? Oh yeah. <laughs> You're telling us we're gonna fight a creature that we've never seen before. Mm-hmm. Sure. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it was somebody's job to take care of those things too. I mean, because mm-hmm. I mean. I'm not fighting a lion. <laughs> yeah. I'm good. I, I'll pass. Yeah, I, it would be my favorite, my first choice. I, also, I remember seeing something about uh, a poacher dude that was in Africa. Everybody was getting mad at him. He got like attacked by a leopard, and he had to basically just like wrestle it to death. Oh, jeez. Which is like, if you're gonna sport hunt like that. <laughs> you win. You get to keep anything you can kill. I mean, it's like, yeah. dude had his like arm torn open, like, like gashes like down to the bone basically, and he just basically just put knee on its stomach and then just choked it. It's like, wow, you win. Nobody's messing with you. I know. It must have been a little bit of a smaller one, I would think. But <laughs> jeez, that's a good way to good way to get done, man. It was like a leopard or something. I think. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So they weren't – leopards aren't – they're not small. They're way mm-hmm. bigger than house cats, but they're not the yeah. larger cats. If you're going to fight one, I'd rather fight a leopard than a lion for sure. <laughs> I'd rather fight a house cat. <laughs> well, uh, there's some pretty nasty house cats I've met. I don't know. But <laughs> well, it's a lion or leopard. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they, they act like it too. A lot of these cats that I, some of my friends have, it's crazy. They'll hunt you and stuff. And, yeah, cats I, are definitely – 
they're still domesticated, but they're a lot less domesticated than like dogs or oh yeah <laughs> horses or things like that. They are definitely still more primal instinct. Give it another loyal to you, yeah. <laughs> hundred, two hundred years, they'll probably be more like dogs, or I don't want to say more like dogs, but they'll be yeah, more maybe friendlyish so. like dogs. Mm-hmm. And I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll have, in like in our lifetime we'll get to play fetch with cats. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, they need some training for that. <laughs> there's some people that like they have cats that are act dog like. I mean, mm. they're like my cat's so weird; it acts like a dog. And I'm like, well, I mean, you just domesticated it the same way a dog. I mean, mm-hmm. at, at, at this point, I don't want to say we don't have a use for cats, but for like the domestication purpose of catching small rodents has definitely <laughs> gone down on the tier list Yeah, for what they're used for. Mm-hmm, definitely. Some people still use them for that. I mean, I know people who do have cats for that reason, but yeah. a lot of people are just like, it's a cute fuzzy animal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then you have the people who are like, my pet lizard. It's like, that thing's not your pet. Yeah. <laughs> they're definitely still wild. Yeah. I don't know that he sees it that way, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> he thinks about crickets and bugs. <laughs> <laughs> it thinks about surviving, reproducing, and sleeping. Yep. <laughs> That's about all. I mean, but I mean, megafauna, I don't want to call dinos dumb or anything because there there were definitely intellectual creatures back then. But mammals definitely were the rise of intellect. Because we got more conscious parts of the brain, different parts of the brain that kind of formed with us. I mean, because you have things like the lizard brain. You know, let me see if I can. Uh, lizard brain. This is going to be weird. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I can already see it. It's, yeah. yeah, this is the perfect example. Um. Let me actually pull it up now. Uh, this is like the perfect visual. How you have like mammals where they get more of the brain. Humans have a more de- more developed brain, but like lizards have like the bare minimum for survival. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's basically like move around, eat, sleep, yeah. drink, <laughs> reproduce. Mm-hmm breathe air it's like the bare minimum of survival yep getting getting warm sitting in the sun yep nothing yeah, too crazy. Like things like that i mean and they're not dumb creatures at all but they're also a lot less i don't know how to say it like without just saying that they're dumb basically yeah. <laughs> very it's very not dumb. really yeah. true mm. they got less brain yeah <laughs> and, and that's I feel part of the reasons why ma- uh, mammals evolved so quickly. Cause I mean, originally we weren't, I don't want to say we weren't evolving cause we were still there with dinosaurs, but they were definitely the overlord keeping the subservient mammal down <laughs> for lack of better mm. visualization. But they were definitely like hunting mammals and things like that. Keep kind of keeping them from uh-huh. evolving to be bigger. But I mean, once they went extinct, we, mammals were like, that's our time. They were holding us back for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Dinosaurs to get to like T Rex was like millions and millions of years. But for like mammals, we just like mm. for the compared to dinosaurs, we kind of just shot up overnight. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just so bizarre to think about that like how long it has taken us to come to existence. I mean, because we definitely just shot up overnight. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, we've we've had, I mean, all been around, I guess, a couple million years or so. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a geologic like blink, blink of an eye. I want to say, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, I think I uh, somebody said like an example, like you hold your arms out to the side. I can't even do it in frame. And yeah, like yeah. your fing, like part of your fingernail is like humanity. Oh wow, I believe, I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> It's so bizarre to think about. It's like, mm. oh, we measure not the, the best part is like, um, what's one of the most? Where did my notebook go? There's my notebook. One of the recent dinosaurs that I 
wrote about in my notebook that I've been writing about was uh, where was it? Richard Re- 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 and whoever names these things. Oh yeah, <laughs> they don't do you any favors. Screw, yeah, screw you, buddy. I have the pronunciation already pulled up here somewhere. <laughs> Pay to go. Uh, what in the world? I assume this is Patio Titan. Oh wow, Patio yeah. Titan, which is a sauropod. And it lived in the Albanian of the Cretaceous, which is like, okay, we broke down time periods even more. Let's see. Let's let's see how uh, long that time period lasts. Mm -hmm. It's like 13, uh, 113, give or take a million years. Yeah, (laughs) jeez. okay mm. it's like wow um that that's very impressive that it's like give or take all of humanity yeah <laughs> it's hard to wrap your head around that much that period of time it's crazy and, and i'm gonna give everyone watching now a little sneak peek on it's not gonna be the next episode because this will be the next episode and mm-hmm. after this i think i plan on starting the actual um tournament thing i was planning on doing but Mm. here's a little sneak peek this probably looks like just blank for it just looks like lines for me it'll probably come out better hopefully and here's a little sneak peek of the peteo titan or however you pronounce it Mm. but it's so it's a giant titanosaur it's not a sauropod because god forbid they just mean the same thing but yeah (laughs) because you have all these little subsections and mammals are the same way. You're like, oh, these things uh like it, it's a this, but doesn't that just mean this? No. <laughs> like, like, like mammoths and mastodons. It's like they're so similar. They should be in the same section. It's like, no, it's like why? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they might might have looked a little similar, but I mean, yeah, super cra- crazy different. <laughs> they're bones. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I love looking at scientific names too, because mm. it's usually nothing that like sounds like it should be the same. Oh yeah, <laughs> like you're like wolf, and you have like Canis Lupus. You're like mm-hmm. it doesn't sound like wolf at all. Yeah, I wolf would be in the name. Like mm. uh, one of the people that I follow, they make wooden replicas of everything that you have to build, and I was thinking about oh, getting no. one, mm. maybe kind of expensive which i don't blame them they're really detailed and they did one for the seahorse and they sent like an email talking about it and they're like hippocampus erectus and i'm like yeah (laughs) what yeah and i look it up and i'm like it's a seahorse (laughs) where did you get this name from yeah and you look at it and like hippocampus is like water horse or something Mm -hmm. what did it mean uh I looked it up because I was just like so com uh like just confused. So hippocampus um it's taking forever. So it means it's meaning horse and campus means sea monster. <laughs> You're getting creative with it, I guess. Yeah. It's like oh okay, like okay, I can see that. But erectus mm-hmm. means upright man. Uh, you have like Homo erectus, which is like the first kind of proto-human, whatever you want to uh, say, before Homo sapien, where they kind of started to unmonkey, if you will. Uh, so seahorse, like the scientific main name means like, what did I say? Horse, sea dragon, upright human. Yeah. So like, who is naming these things? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, someone's having a good time. It's like, it's like, please get a normal name for once. Just call it like Seahorseus. Yeah, they're Something not making normal. <laughs> and it's like, oh, what, what is this? A uh, saber tooth catius, smilodonius. Yeah. It's yeah. like just, just something normal before, mm. other than like, I don't even know what the cat one is. What is it? Feline something. I don't even remember off the top of my head. 
But I mean, you get all these crazy names, and it's just like I love sounding sounding out a word I've never even thought to pronounce because mm-hmm. it's barely a word. Yeah. <laughs> like typing out a name and it's just like like glipped it on, you'll type it out and it'll just be like, that word's wrong. Mm, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean it's wrong? Did I spell it wrong? Did I spell glipped it on wrong? And it's like, okay, how do I what is the autocorrect for it? And it's like no search. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Every day. Every day. <sighs> and I mean that's that's one of the funny parts of this is or it'll autocorrect because my keyboard will do something funny where I'll get like the prime example is like Krylophosaurus. I'll type it out in lowercase letters and it'll just autocorrect to being all capitalized. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, I guess I'm screaming Krylophosaurus at people. So yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and it's so crazy how just, magnificent that these like mammals are i mean we see them today and we kind of take them for granted that mm-hmm. they they are existed in a lot of their ancestors and don't exist and there are a lot of species of megafauna that could have evolved into something but didn't mm-hmm. get the chance to and i mean it's so crazy to think about i mean at one time, cows were like four times their size. Now we just harvest them for meat. I mean, <laughs> yeah, just eat them. That a thought. It's kind of funny because we kind of are trying to turn them back into megafauna mm. to get more, more cow. Yeah, making them bigger, more bigger. We need we need bigger cows to get more meat to get. It's like. <laughs> megafauna unmegafauna to turn into normal fauna. Now we're trying to meet remegafauna the the fauna. Yeah, it's like definitely got a lot of meat off a, a mastodon or a mammoth back in the day. Oh, <laughs> definitely fed the village for. Yeah, you'd be having a party. And, <laughs> and I mean, we are definitely a very impressive species on that account, mm-hmm. and we're definitely the most egotistical species on that account too because we'll kill a species and we're just like let's bring it back for round yeah. two <laughs> like, <laughs> like hum- humans cause dodos to go extinct and we're like let's bring them back and i'm sure the dodos are like please don't <laughs> we know you're gonna eat us <laughs> oh man yep <sighs> i mean talking about time scales too is insane because it's like there's so much time yet things all happened in like so close together which is really weird because you're like oh we have all this time and then you're like yeah but mammoths were around during egypt Mm, yeah that's the crazy part (laughs) what yeah like dodo's extinct went extinct like really recently i think it was like the 1700s that they went oh super yeah like blink of an eye i just missed them Mm -hmm. and it's like what is going on i mean you're telling me king tuck would it could have went and pet a mammoth yeah <laughs> I mean, it is it's like think about those those worlds evolving together like that man well as the mammoths were kind of shutting down um on wrangle island up there and stuff but because i mean one of the prime theories is that they just kind of didn't have a big enough gene pool mm-hmm. so they kind of just inbred weirdly and they stopped being mammoths yeah i think the island was wasn't quite big enough to support a genetically diverse population and stuff so then they ended themselves a little bit and i want to believe i i want i don't want to believe i want to believe that there was only that i believe let me think of hang on (laughs) what am i trying to say here i believe there was only like 500 or so original mammoths that got onto the island before it became an island. Mm-hmm. So it's like that's not enough to kind of keep a species alive. Yeah, that I had heard another study that came out of the Yukon that was talking about how they found like traces of DNA in the permafrost that were like dated to like five, six thousand years, but I wasn't totally sure on the validity of that study. 
Um, but I mean, I totally think a lot of the megafauna probably stuck around a lot longer or maybe not a lot longer, but longer than we would think. Um, mm. just cause I mean, there's no way they all went like right at 10,000 years ago or whatever. Oh, um, yeah, definitely. But, uh, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Definitely something happened though. It made them all, uh, made them all start to start to wind down and kind of made everything go extinct, at least in North America. That was like in generally roughly the size of a little bit, anything bigger than a German shepherd went extinct with the exception of like a few, you know, elk and bison and stuff. But, uh, yeah, no, crazy, crazy stuff. And I mean, I would actually like to visit that island and see what kind of mammoth bones you find because it it sounds horrible that they had to like, that, well, they didn't have to, I mean, but they like kind of started to inbreed, but it's also like, what kind of unique mammoth bones do you find from that? Oh. <laughs> what like odd deformity do they get? Mm-hmm. After like how many ever years of just basically inbreeding, dude, were the like <laughs> tusks bigger? Was there like something else going on? It's like I want to see some of these bones. To see yeah, what weird, unique creatures were going on. Yeah, I think I'm not sure if they ever found anything like that, but I know I think like I mean their DNA was getting all all really really bad, and it was yeah. probably off important traits or screwing up their ability to process stuff or or uh, making them immune or making acceptable to, to disease or something um yeah for sure it wasn't, wasn't a good time to be a mammoth and i'm sure if mammoths were on that island there was other stuff that got on the island like i'm sure there were predators on the island that hunted mammoths i mean I, i'm sure there were other herbivore like creatures that made it onto the island that went just alongside the mammoths i mean it couldn't have just been mammoths that would have been rather interesting like a yeah. very very convenient yeah islands islands do some do some weird stuff to animals i mean there's some islands off the coast of california where they had uh i guess the columbia mammoths swam out there and then they became like miniature many little mini mammoths um back in the ice age too but uh yeah islands can do some weird stuff weird stuff to large animals because it's like the separate it's, it's just the separation of like basically genetic diversity Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it you can see it in like people and other things. Like you, you just look at like cultures from around the world. Like look how different the Europeans are from the Asians and the Africans and like Native Americans and like just look how different cultures are from around the world. It's the same thing, which also makes me think we're like. Man, did, did mammoths have like a hierarchy like that where they're like oh well we're bigger mammoths so we think we're better than these mammoths <laughs> so i mean it's like probably the i mean the bulls would spar and stuff and fight each other and it was i guess whoever's the the toughest one I and mean, whoever was still standing uh is the one that ended up on top um i want to say there's a site in nebraska where they you've probably seen heard of it the, the they found the two bull columbia mammoths with the tusks locked um from from sparring kind of like white-tailed deer do nowadays um they just get locked up but i wonder uh, how they how they died like did they just both like bonk concussion fall over die it's like how did that happen how did we find them locked together locked like they got stuck the tusks were stuck and then they couldn't eat or drink um and then they just probably starved to death or whatever or or died of thirst that's horrible yeah, really rough way to go. <laughs> like, it wasn't like, good cats back in the Pleistocene. <laughs> bonk. Oh, well, I guess we're stuck like this. Yeah, you weren't dying of old age back then, that's for sure. <laughs> so how's your day? <laughs> it's going fine until I got locked together with you. I know, and then you just kind of lay down and wait for the the pack of dire wolves to come get you or something, or the yeah, shortfish okay. get you. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that they weren't. Just gonna die from starvation instantly. I mean, they probably were hunted by (laughs) critters that just picked them off for being yeah tired and weak. A crew for sure. (laughs) So I mean, I I mean, do you have any questions for me or anything else? I mean, um, no. I mean, this has been super cool. It's been it's dope to talk to somebody that uh, really cares about this stuff too, and uh, um. I guess yeah, love love sharing my I guess my unique perspective and stuff more, a little more Pleistocene stuff. But uh, 
I mean, yeah, you're in a great area out there. You should, uh, you should definitely get on good creeks or something. Find some rivers or lakes or something and just go wading through them. Yeah, go walk. Yeah, around. Go get some bones eventually for sure. Um, well, yeah, man, it's been great talking. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Of course, thanks for coming on, man. I always enjoy having people that enjoy talking about the prehistoric world and ancient creatures and just talk about what they know, what they have, what they got going on. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just always fun to share the experience. Well, I mean, so I, I'm going to let you go. I mean, I'm sure you got stuff you got to do. So, um, yeah, I'll appreciate it, man. Yeah. Happy, happy anytime to sit down for a chat. Really appreciate it. And let's see, there it is. Uh, that way <laughs> there's, Again, there's his Instagram for anybody who wants to check it out. He's got a lot of amazing content on there of fossils and whatnot that he has found. You can kind of see uh, the ground sloth right there. If anybody's interested in checking that out. Um, just going to do, do a little scroll through. A lot of molars. Lots of mastodon teeth. There we go. <laughs> lots of mastodon teeth. Mm -hmm. Um Big tusk, yeah. There's the tusk. tusk, a big skull. I mean, bison. Yep. So if any of you find that interesting, I really suggest going and checking out his Instagram. Well, I mean, I'm gonna let you go, and <laughs> I definitely am going to stay in touch. I mean, absolutely. Hopefully, have another interview or have something else to bring up to talk about. And if you ever want to just come on the show to talk about anything, feel free to. Hit me up and just be like, mind come if I come on the show one day. I mean, <laughs> I always love having guests on. It's mm -hmm. one of my favorite things. I mean, hopefully I don't run out of people to talk to. <laughs> well, yeah, man, I'd, I'd love to come on again. I really appreciate it. It was good talking to you. And I mean, I guess I'll see you later and talk to you later. All right, we'll keep in touch. Good to hear from you. Take it easy. You too. Bye, man. Bye, bye. So. He's gone now. I don't know why I was pointing. Uh, that was Dylan from um, Midwestern Fossils. And before we go, you know I got to do the outro and all that. But first, again, our sponsorship from Dinosaur Trips, uh, $250 off. If you tell them that you heard about them from Prehistoric Life Podcast. So there's their Instagram. And if you want the website, was it i always have the utah and colorado one pulled up because you guys know i'm a sucker for the jurassic um so there's red rocks and raptors that's the one that i personally it's also the one that dr brian curtis is leading that i really wish i could go on um his name right there dr brian curtis real good friend so yeah go check that out too that way go check that out too if you're interested and um like I mentioned earlier, coming up, I'm going to just make the announcement now. Um, coming up, I'm going to try to do every Friday there's going to be a tournament uh, or a, a battle episode, a fight episode. Because I used to do Fight Friday kind of things where I do um, dinosaur clashes. But I'm going to kind of run a tournament for the next couple months probably. It's probably going to be a couple months that I get this done until I get this done. But I'm going to try to do that every Friday. Um yeah, and there's some dinosaurs on there that I have not done. And there are some dinosaurs. A lot of them are ones that I've done. There's a lot that I haven't. I say a lot, but it was like three. And surprisingly, I didn't have Majungasaurus like I talked about earlier, or Rip of Rivenator in there. And I have to do those before I can do the fight so I can get all the data and stuff. But, yeah, I mean – Again, Dylan, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, always an honor having any anybody on that likes talking about this stuff. Um, if you want more content from me, like that post that I made on my story, go check out the – I guess it would be that way. The Prehistoric Life Podcast Instagram page. I do a lot of exclusive content on there. I do – reels about the people that i've interviewed things like that uh pictures from episodes events that i went to um dinosaurs coming up things like that that's where you if you know you figured out about the um 
the tournament coming up. I forgot what it was called. So go check that out. And if you want my content a little bit early, I try to post it a little bit earlier on the inst- on not on Instagram on the YouTube page. There's the YouTube page. There's Sky. We did an interview with her. I think she was the last interview I did before this one. Um, so go check out that interview too. Um, it was about the Mother's Day site, but there's my YouTube. I try to post everything a little bit early on there, earlier on there. And if you want that all in one place, um, remember, go check out the Prehistoric Life podcast website. Um, you've got the YouTube and the, and the Instagram right there, and you have all the episodes. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you got the Instagram page again. Um, but, yeah. There's, there it is. Go check that out. Um, but till next time, I'm your host, Eric Crawford, signing off. This has been Prehistoric Life Podcast. Again, Dylan, thank you so much for coming on. It was a true honor having you on. But I'm your host, Eric Crawford, signing off. I will see you all next time. And remember, keep it prehistoric. Goodbye. <laughs>